huge support of this permaculture action tour that we are doing, that we're embarking on across the nation. It's a beautiful thing to witness. We've been up and down the West Coast and to see literally hundreds of people coming out after these shows to get their hands dirty, to make change in the cities we pass through. It feels like we're on some revolutionary type shit.
There's like 500 something people on Facebook saying they're coming. I don't even know. It's about to be like permaculture meets epic partying while building and growing food. It's gonna be amazing. Grab a flyer on your way out. What has happened? What has just happened is the seed has been dropped, and now and now we're covering it with with all sorts of organic matter, and and we're gonna start watering it and. And word is getting out, you know, that seed, people are finding out that that seed has been planted. And we're waiting for other people to drop seeds in other parts of the world, other parts of the United States, other artists to, to stand up and use their platform to create change. You know, that's what this whole thing was about. It's about, it was about motivating. It was about being, using this tour as a spark to, um, to set forth a movement to set forth a movement that hopefully can catalyze extremely rapid change and and create awareness that we are we are part of this planet mm -hmm. you know we're we're just an extension of it mm -hmm. and by healing this planet ultimately we're, we're only healing ourselves so that's what we saw on the permaculture action tour was getting 400 people to come out in denver colorado to work on five different projects around the city and in a single day seeing a space that used to be a landfill in the middle of the inner city get turned into a community garden with the geodesic dome greenhouse. So today we are at the Elm Street site of our Community Action Day here on the Permaculture uh, Tour. And these, what I'm sitting on right here, are excess car tires. And these tires would have normally gone into a landfill, but today they were turned into an earth ship. So in Colorado, we have about five months, six months growing, pushing it, seven, something like that. So basically we have a shorter growing season in a lot of places and we'd like to extend that growing season. And the community garden brought us in so that we can help them out with that. Came out here to help, help our people in Park Hill in the hood, beautify the hood and do some transformations to this area, you know, without gentrifying it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Here's our, the Earthship part of our build, the Earthship inspired part of the build, and they are a monolithic structure. We pound the tires with dirt. You can use any kind of dirt. It, we compact the tires in there with a sledgehammer. They puff up, the tire becomes then a 300 pound rubber steel reinforced earth brick. And we stack them and stagger them just like bricks and we treat it just like masonry, but it's kind of like a futuristic masonry because we're using waste stream and we're upcycling it and it's better to use this as a building material than have the tires be sitting in the bottom of the ocean, filling up the landfills, being burnt somewhere, putting more carbon in the air that needs to be sequestered. So we're basically, basically sequestering more carbon and stacking the functions, not only sequestering carbon, but using it as a building material. So it's, it's pretty cool. It's permaculture, it's permaculture. I mean, permaculture, we like stacking stuff. We like putting as much shit in there as possible. We like having the system have as many outputs as possible, not just food. Um, you getting some behind the scenes? You don't want this, David? Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> I feel rude taking it from you. <laughs> Maybe you should do something provocative for the backstage. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about stacking functions with that somehow. So, um... <laughs> On the permaculture action tour, <laughs> when we run out of guayaki to drink, we like to stack functions. I don't know. I don't want to do something like that. What do you mean by that? <laughs> Seeing a yard of a man who used to buy all of his food from the grocery store and be really unhappy with his life turn into an edible permaculture landscape. It's not only a hobby, but I don't have to go to the store very much. I can stay at home and eat what I want and how I want. I done lost a hundred and some pounds. I eat a lot of vegetables now. At one time I didn't have them. And I couldn't afford to buy them every day. Watching people go to this indoor farm in the middle of the city and learn how they grow fish and plants and herbs in a cyclical system and then use that space to teach children all over the city how they can do the same where they live. And then we, all of us, took this dome, this metal dome. Everyone put one finger underneath it and we walked it over. Everyone just holding it with their one finger. We didn't, you know, we didn't get permits for this because we didn't need to. We didn't ask permission for this. We're doing stuff. We're designing our lifestyles away from 
the over consumption lifestyle of fossil fuels and going to the mall and buying all over the over consumption man we're like simplifying and designing away from that into like appropriate technologies like this greenhouse is going to be passively ran so there's not going to be any high tech things about this greenhouse anybody could run it anybody can grow food out of it and it's still hella advanced you're still like incorporating the uh, natural phenomena of the planet, the rain, the sun, the earth, and you're creating technology with it that's more appropriate to the common people, which is like the neglected people in this world. Uh, but in permaculture, we actually strive to go beyond sustainability. We want to create a way of living that is regenerative, a way of living that can heal the damage that's already been done, a way of living that's mutually beneficial to the other people around us and symbiotic with the ecological organisms and the natural world around us. So what we do in permaculture is we look at the patterns and relationships that exist in natural ecosystems, like a forest, and then we apply those design principles to the way that we steward the land, the way that we grow our food and our medicine, the way that we build and the way that we create culture together. I feel, the, I feel completely, completely, utterly inspired and charged up right now. It's, it's where music and celebration can meet impact. So just remember that you're not an observer and you're not a consumer and you don't have to just sit there and, and hope. You can get out there and you can act. I'm Ryan Rising, I'm an organizer and permaculture educator from Oakland, California. My name is Mr. Liff. Uh, I am one third of Terabella, uh, which is a group that features myself, Polish Ambassador, and Ayla Nario. We are currently on our first tour together, which is uh, which Polish uh, Polish Ambassador is headlining. It's the Permaculture Action Tour, and um, it's just a beautiful, beautiful movement in which uh, every city that we go to and you know and, and perform a show, we also try to have a permaculture action action uh, in in either that town directly or a nearby town where people can come out, learn about permaculture, get their hands in the soil, uh, plant something beautiful and allow it to grow. So we're trying to not just come through here, tearing through here with, uh, with the exhaust from our tour bus, we're trying to leave something beautiful behind uh, to help heal the earth as we kind of inevitably uh, you know, let off some fumes into, into the air. So we're just trying to give back a little something. The permaculture action team, Zach, Jasmine, Erin, Jade, and myself packed into an SUV in San Francisco, California on September 27th and headed up to Nevada City to do our first action day with Common Vision, planting fruit trees at an elementary school. Permaculture is about taking action, okay? And that's why we're all here. How many people are going to the action tomorrow? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, today, Common Vision partnered with uh, the Polish Ambassadors uh, Permaculture Action Tour to uh, transform what was a uh, grassy, rocky, rubble-filled hillside into a, a future orchard and school garden. Uh, today we <clears throat> laid the groundwork for a deer fence, uh, trenched for uh, irrigation systems, uh, and dug holes through some pretty intense rock yeah. to uh, provide an opportunity for the kids tomorrow to be planting 15 uh, fruit trees right here in the schoolyard. time to move away from this kind of relationship to the land and each other as something that's alternative, to move away from um, an us and them mentality, and to move into the, the, the commons, to move into 
Doesn't matter if you're a Republican or Democrat or independent. Doesn't matter uh, what your class is, what your race is, what your sexual orientation is. Uh, none of these things matter when we're talking about water security, food security, safety in our community. Like this whole tour was totally this, this, this grand experiment, this grand question of, hey, can we, can we take a show around the country and can we bring awareness to something that's gonna, that's gonna help serve the communities that we pass through, mm -hmm. you know? When we roll through New York City, yeah, let's rock a party, but yeah, let's have a work party the next day and get some stuff done and serve the community. And you know, that, that was the question that we started off with. Can, can music be a catalyst for social change? And the answer is fuck yes it can. <laughs> fuck yes. It totally can because we just did it for a month and a half and what we have seen is it's, it's blowing the roof off. It's like so many people, so many people are, are talking to us right now about like what's the next step? What, it, what are we gonna do next? Other artists wanna jump, jump on board. Like news stations are coming to cover what we're doing. It's just like, I don't know. I don't know what the next step is. Let's dream it together. An individual with their own vision is a beautiful thing and you can take your own actions alone and slowly watch how that builds and builds and starts to transform the space around you. And when two or three people get together, it's even more potent than that. But when you see 100, 300, 400 more people come together and share a vision and take action together, you watch the world change quicker than you'd ever imagined possible. And that's what we saw on the Permaculture Action Tour, and that's what we want to see continue beyond it. Just shine a spotlight on you guys, give you guys the love that you deserve. To be a part of this, this seed, this seed that we're planting right now. The first time this is the first time this has ever really been done. These guys rocked it so, so hard. We had so much love for these guys. Jasmine, take a bow. Just take the ideas that people provide you with, come up with your own idea of what it is that you want to see in the world. Permaculture is about design. It's about designing the world. It's about a way of seeing. It's a way of being. It's a way of thinking. It is not herb spirals, chicken tractors, or earth ships. It is actually about retrofitting the entire economy to be regionally based. We don't want the same food in the same place, in the same shape everywhere. We don't want the same houses. We don't want the same buildings. We actually want different culture, regional culture, regional economies, not just a global, monstrous, long distance transportation centralized economy, but an actual regional, diverse, unique, beautiful, human-centered, people-centered, earth-centered economies. Sometimes we forget that, that humanity is us. We're humanity, and that includes the future ones. And this short-term thinking is, is just, um, it's not really working anymore, so. And we're gonna get out there and we're gonna create it ourselves. We're gonna take that next step to change the world around us with our own hands. That's what's gonna allow us to come out of these problems that we're in. And permaculture provides us some of the solutions for that. It looks at how healthy functional relationships between people and how healthy functional systems for creating food and medicine and water and buildings and all these things that we need um, can be provided for. So, a lot of times permaculture gets framed as, oh, it's like, I want my herb spiral, and I want my pretty fountain, I want my chickens, and I want all this stuff. But it's about the relationships between all that stuff. And it's not just about stuff, it's about us, right? And it's about us coming together and building relationships, and that's why we're here tonight. And so it turns out that once you start studying permaculture design methodology, you realize, oh, the ecological systems that we need to work on, you know what, we have the techniques and skills to do that. But as, uh, as my dear friend and mentor Brock Dolman likes to say, it's the ego system that's the problem, right? That's what we need to work on. So we're really here to figure out 
how do we let go of the challenges in our egos and work on building relationships that can allow us to work together in a really important time in history. I'm sure a lot of you were tracking what happened on Sunday. It was the People's Climate March in New York and Solidarity Marches all over the world. Biggest climate march that we've ever seen because this is the moment, this is the time. That's why we're doing this. That's Thank why you, Mr. Secretary this. General, your excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, and distinguished guests. I'm honored to be here today. I stand before you not as an expert, but as a concerned citizen. One of the 400,000 people who marched in the streets of New York on Sunday and the billions of others around the world who want to solve our climate crisis. As an actor, I pretend for a living. I play fictitious characters, often solving fictitious problems. I believe that mankind has looked at climate change in that same way, as if it were a fiction, as if pretending that climate change wasn't real would somehow make it go away. But I think we all know better than that now. Every week we're seeing new and undeniable climate events, evidence that accelerated climate change is here right now. Droughts are intensifying, our oceans are acidifying, with methane plumes rising up from the ocean floor, we are seeing extreme weather events and the West Antarctic and Greenland ice sheets melting at unprecedented rates, decades ahead of scientific projections. None of this is rhetoric and none of it is hysteria. It is fact. I think climate change is one of the most interesting issues right now because it affects everybody, which is so different than issues that we faced in the past, whether it's environmental racism or exploitation of labor or police violence. There's always some segment of the population that's affected and some segment of the population that gets to look away or actually benefits from that harm. And climate change, because it affects our ecological commons, the atmosphere, this thing that we all share together, it's the first thing that affects every single one of us. And so I think it's waking up a lot of people because for once we can't look away no matter how privileged we are or how distanced we are from the problem or from the people or from the, the ecology that's being harmed. For the first time, we feel that, okay, I'm going to be affected by this, so I want to do something about it. what's left. we got bills to pay. They can't slay our mortal souls and leave us cold, so connected to the grid. we got to disconnect. to try to catch the people before they leave the building because I personally love to talk with the fans that came out to support us and just catch them when they're in this totally jubilant state, you know, because I'm on fire right now in terms of just feeling completely illuminated and just having a chance to talk with the fans too and then sign CDs for them if they want CDs. It's just like, this is just, this is a must for me every night. Like the show isn't complete until I get to build with the fans. So we'll see. This elevator is a little slower than I would like it to be, but. Let's see if we can catch some people before they escape. Before they escape the venue and pour into the streets. Let's see here. Open, come on, give it to us. Through the elevator. Thank you! We headed to San Luis Obispo, and then Sebastopol, and all the way down the coast of California to San Diego, doing action days in every city that we went to. When we got to Los Angeles, we did our action day with Kiss the Ground, where we brought out 150 people to create a permaculture garden on Venice Beach in Los Angeles at what used to be the old city hall. Then we headed up to San Francisco, California, where we played the Regency Ballroom. What is it? This is so awesome! <laughs> yeah. 
This is kind of like the best thing ever. Everyone's happy and planting food and medicine herbs and digging and getting their hands dirty and learning from the workshops and being fed by amazing people who brought all of their good, organic, amazing, healthy drinks and foods. And My check! Awesome. My check! Let's talk about permaculture! Let's talk about permaculture! And agroecology! And agroecology! Is happening now! Is happening now! I feel after this first week, it's been a lot of just getting in the rhythm of what it means to do a permaculture action tour and what it means to not only be doing a normal tour, which is tiring, playing every night, but also having these action days and trying to show up as much as we possibly can to them. And um, last night was our sixth show of this tour and I wasn't sure how I'd feel today about working all day and um, digging and planting. And I thought maybe that I might feel exhausted and I've been here all day uh, planting and getting my hands in the dirt and talking to people and being fed by amazing groups that have brought out their organic food and making connections and walking around barefoot and I feel more amazing than I felt on this entire tour and I, my sleep deprivation is just gone out the window. I don't even feel tired at all and I feel like it's a real testament to how energizing it is to be in community with people and to um, put our hands in the earth and to grow things and to learn things. I feel so inspired by everyone here. And uh, I feel happier than I've felt for a long time. We just, we just finished up the Tarabella set and 1,500 people just like buzzing, just like screaming as loud as they can. So I gotta go back upstairs in like two minutes. They're, they're waiting for me. So um, yeah, but just like the message is being, is being sent and received and people are loving it and it's feeling so good up there. The vibes are just off the charts. It's, I don't know. I gotta go though. I'll see you guys later. store if our food is growing all around us and we don't need this whole system if we're creating a new better more beautiful efficient system together and relying on each other as community yeah and that's what we're seeing before our eyes every single action day we're seeing that totally in reality one of the greatest challenges of the tour was doing this much work in so little time we traveled to 33 different cities in six weeks and did action days that sometimes had four or five different sites in that city happening simultaneously. The way we were able to hold that all together was from decentralizing the organizing. And so the permaculture action team was the connectors. We made the connections between the audiences and these places and these organizations and the wider community that could support them. But it was really the local organizers in each city that held each action day together. ready to get down? I invite you to let loose whatever animal is inside you and needs to get really weird. So Kalamazoo, Michigan is one of the best examples of what we're talking about. In Kalamazoo, we had three people that hadn't worked together in the past come together because they'd heard of this idea of the Permaculture Action Tour and saw it was coming to Kalamazoo and they wanted to host an action day. They told us that they wanted to get a piece of city land given to them. They wanted to come up with a comprehensive permaculture design for this whole piece of land and they wanted to plant a food forest, an edible forest garden of hundreds of fruit and nut trees and all kinds of support species and pollinator plants. So I was speaking with them and I said, 
well, so you guys have this piece of land already, right? And they said, no. And so this group of a few people got in touch with the city. They got this humongous riparian piece of land given to them. They designed an entire edible forest garden for it. They got in touch with all the local nurseries and tree providers. They got over 100 fruit and nut trees given to them, along with all kinds of pollinator species and perennial vegetables and other useful plants. They started a crowdfunding campaign and raised all of their own money. They sourced all of the tools for the Action Day. And then when the Action Day came, we had 150 people come out and we put every single person to work planting this edible forest garden. So that is the beauty of people stepping up and acting and becoming organizers in their own communities. Jasmine and Aaron and Zach and the Polish ambassador, we didn't do any of that. We just connected the dots and gave a little bit of inspiration. But it was really the local organizers that hadn't even done projects like this in the past that stepped up and made all of this happen. And it was one of the most beautiful action days that we were a part of. So this is the power that we want to spread, the power of taking it into our own hands to, to create the world that we want to see. And it's the power of turning a consumer or an observer into a participant and an actor and an organizer that this tour really catalyzed. And we want to see that continue on and on. <laughs> no. No. My bad. Dude, my open up the car. Everything always falls out. So you must open with caution. <laughs> and if shit falls out in the wet, you pick it up immediately and you let it drip fully. I'm getting a little carried away. Yeah! You get my gist. Woo! I'm rich, bitch! It's a really key thing to return to the land. And whether we do that in our city neighborhoods or whether we do that in by coming, you know, by coming or co-creating an opportunity like this to be on a farm um, at the edge of the wilderness, it's very much time to um, anchor our lives back with planetary patterns and the patterns of our watersheds and our food systems and our soil sheds. If you eat food, then you might want to know about gardening. <laughs> if you drink water, you might want to know about water. And um, we're all involved just automatically. And I'm Lissa, I'm the farm manager at Common Good City Farm. Uh, we're in LaJoyt Park uh, in Washington, DC. And we are a nonprofit. Uh, our mission is to provide our local community and neighborhoods with affordable and fresh produce as well as um, whole food education. In this space for seven years, uh, we were invited by the community. This used to be an abandoned baseball field from an elementary school that got closed down. It became an unsafe space and the community quickly rallied. The attachment we have with our food uh, fosters habits of unhealthy eating, obesity, diabetes, all these kind of lifestyle diseases that the average American acquire now. Uh, so being able to show the kids as the adults, hey, this is what a fresh tomato tastes like, this is how you grow it, this is how you can grow it on your own, um, starts to foster good eating habits, as well as um, the community coming together and having a safe place um, to share those experiences with. Oh, we, are, we are one tour that went across the country doing this. What's the world going to look like if there's a thousand tours going across the country doing this? You know, what's this, what's, what's this world going to look like if what we're doing right now becomes fashionable? Yeah, if the norm for public parks is to become food gardens. Yeah, and if the norm for, for the touring arts is to shine a light on, on things that are, that need help. We have this commonality that we share about wanting to have a better world, about um, envisioning the world that we want to see, and there's just all these people with open hearts, willing to work, but needing to channel their energy into something, and that's why it's cool what Polish Ambassador is doing, because we're taking our community, we're building community, and we're building something for a school that's going to be more long-lasting than just a night of dancing around.
So permaculture, permaculture comes from the words permanent and agriculture, and even more broadly, permanent and culture. If culture is the way that we as people organize our lives and relate to one another and our ecosystems and how we create what we need, then a permanent culture is a culture that could theoretically be infinitely sustained, that could keep on going. And it keeps on going by being cyclical and putting back the energy from which it came, which is very different from our culture now, which is a very linear culture. We take from the earth and we take from each other, and then we throw out and we throw away. And so what permaculture does is it looks at natural ecosystems and how they function and the relationships in nature, and it mimics those so that we can create what we need, create an abundance and build our communities to be strong. Nothing's happening. <laughs> okay, okay, so welcome to day five of the Permaculture Action Tour. We've just run out of gas on the side of the highway. And our intern and dear friend Jade has just locked her keys in her truck. <laughs> and so there's a, a reason that we're not getting to the San Diego show in a timely manner tonight. But when we do, we're, we're gonna, gonna make her. it the most fucking happening thing you've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it. Do we have those bleeps? <laughs> Bleep. Because I said that word. Oh, I can. Oh, so that it's word. a rated R movie. Are you ready, San Diego? We're coming in hot. And by oh, yes. hot, I mean our car's turned off and it's 100 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> All of our associates are Don't mind the stench. This is permaculture in action. This love, this inspiration to heal planet Earth and come together as one community, I challenge you to take real action tomorrow. Because tomorrow, we're going to be activating this permaculture culture, okay? We're going to be activating something that's been growing now for decades, globally, and in this community. And, you know, I, some of you know me, I'm a man of action, and I want to see things get done. And my challenge is, how do we actually get things done? How do we change our perspective and how we develop our infrastructure in our communities. I'm Eric Olson. I'm the director of the Permaculture Skills Center and we're here at the Permaculture Skills Center right now during the Community Impact Day as part of the Permaculture Action Tour. We're on a five acre permaculture demonstration farm which includes uh, one acre of vegetable production, over 250 fruit and nut trees, all heirloom varietals. We've got rotational chicken grazing systems. We've got rain catchment systems. We're here at this education center which is used to train people the next generation of earth healers and the next generation of land stewards and this this center is focused on giving people the real tangible skills to really get the work on the ground we also have built a green business incubation center here and we're just a startup so we're just kind of getting going on that but our goal is to incubate a variety of regenerative businesses that heal the planet and take care of humanity uh, while actually paying people a living wage. The TPA tour we will have two buckets oh of crystals. These are the kind of fans we have. <laughs> nice. This is our Transmitter. This is one show. This sits on Make stage one, with us. Wow. One and show takes... is worth of crystals. That's not true. It's not true, but. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not true. Sounds good. Actually, I brought this one and this one from home, but we were given shh, all of these shh, over quiet. the last five or quiet. so shows. No, well, I mean, they're not, most Come of on. them came from this room. Be cute, sing, girl. Well, there's all sorts of like. And sometimes life hurls boulders in front of us. And who knows how we're gonna get around it? Who knows if we can ever keep going after these things come before us, stopping our way? And so this song is for dancing with all the boulders, turning it into our words, turning it into our visions, so we can help others rise up. And they're saying, you know, it's carbon or overpopulation when the real problem is conspicuous consumption lifestyles of the rich and ridiculous. It has nothing to do with too many people and it has nothing to do with carbon. 
Both of those things are obfuscations of the real issue. The real issue is contamination and toxification of the American people and the world at the hands of the lifestyles of the rich and ridiculous that own the media moguls and promulgate their agenda through it as a model of success that the World Bank and the IMF fund finance around the world. So that model of economic development is well-funded, well-entrenched, well-established, and what we're up against when we talk about business as usual, which is what this is a manifestation of when we see Big Brother coming in and doing a land grab for whatever it is they want to do. I do know that it was bulldozed this year, and before it was bulldozed, it was providing food to people in this neighborhood for the last 14 years. Could we have a human ecosystem that's based on cooperation and appreciation, and a sharing that comes about because of appreciation, uh, instead of because of adversar adversarial you know, battles. <laughs> I really see this whole garden here, this whole farm is one big seed that is seeding out this happening in this whole community, in this larger urban community. It's just the, the starting seed for a much bigger garden to grow that can feed people. Right now in this area alone, in the Bay Area, if they planted gardens in every unused garden space and every unused land space, they could feed 500,000 people. Permaculture is not only about growing food and catching water and, and creating the, the visible structures, the eco-villages and the urban farms and the different ways that we're going to meet our needs. It's also about creating these invisible structures, creating community and cultivating relationships. And Bill Mollison, who's the founder of this word, permaculture, could be called the founder of this movement once said that permaculture is revolution disguised as community gardening. And that's what we really felt with this tour was that permaculture as a word, as a concept, is an entry point for so many people. It's, it's based on earth skills. It's based on reconnection with our ecology and with each other. It's based on something that I can actually do. I can plant a garden and I can build a greenhouse and I can create a natural building or create a rainwater harvesting system. That's a lot easier for me to conceptualize of doing than is transforming the entire society around me, which seems overwhelming. But it's all those little bits of the actions that we take within permaculture that will transform the world around us. And so that's why permaculture is this wonderful entry point for people to come to a show and hear the Polish ambassador on stage and then hear him talk about permaculture and hear the organizers from their community talk about this. And then once they get involved, they start to see that they have the power and can take it into their own hands to reform the world around them and rebuild community where they live.
doing with that unique opportunity where you would, you have an unprecedented amount of resources at your disposal. And what are you doing with that? Are, are, you, are you doing something that is self-serving or are you figuring out a way to include others and include other species and the ecosystems that you depend on in that? But it's not just about permaculture, it's about taking action. We can learn about these ideas and have these discussions and watch these documentaries all day long, but until we get out there with our communities and start to take the power into our own hands to actually rebuild this world we want to see through action, we're not gonna see it come about. And so that's why we've based this tour on permaculture and action. Yeah, Portland uh, was one of the best action days that we did. We brought out about 350 people to four urban farms around the city, and then we had them all meet up at Alberta Park in the afternoon. This is the Turner Garden, and we farmed here for five years. It's owned by a woman that lives in Colorado. This year we grew peppers and corn and leeks and uh, sweet potatoes. The food that we don't uh, pass out to the volunteers in exchange for their hours goes into a food bank um, in the St. Andrew's Church and so we're be feeding people through a food bank that never had fresh produce ever um, for over 40 years in their food bank. So now they have fresh produce um, the last five years. Wow. Yeah. Feed the people. Thank you. <laughs> Eat them. <laughs> We had a discussion with everyone who came from these four urban farm sites around Portland and then we walked across the street to an empty lot that had real estate development signs up on it with pictures of the condominiums that they were going to develop for about half a million dollars. And we turned it into an urban garden and a community farm, a piece of land that used to be a community farm many years ago before it had started to be moved towards development. It's just, it's so amazing to feel that this, this music and this permaculture action toward this project is, is really potent and it's really powerful. And we had no idea really. We really had no idea what, what was gonna happen. This was all a big experiment, but it's like, it's sort of almost just guiding itself at this point. It's just every, every action day is getting better and better and more dialed and there's so much community support, you know, it's, I don't know, it, war it warms my heart. It makes me like, it makes me feel like, yes, yes, we're doing it. I feel like this tour is so amazing. <laughs> I didn't sneak into the, to the Polish ambassador's really dream nice room. room. When, yeah, it's a hella nice room, right? They put us in this wonk ass room. They put us in the basement. They put us in the basement green room. Look at this. <laughs> no windows. <laughs> Yeah, crazy eyes everywhere. That's pretty cool. Wow. Wow. So we would get to sleep around 1.30, 2 in the morning most nights. People in every single city hosted us at their houses the entire way through, which was really phenomenal, and thank you to everybody that, that hosted us. And we would wake up around 7.30 in the morning to try to get to an action day site around 8, 8.30. And we'd facilitate the action day in that city from about 8.30, 9 a.m. through to about noon or 3 p.m., depending on how far we had to travel to the next city. And then we'd all jump in the car and we'd get on the road and we'd drive to the next city to do it all again and get to the next venue by six o'clock that night so that we could set up for the next show. And we repeated this every day for about six weeks. And our time in the car was some of the funniest time. There'd be one of the five of us driving the vehicle and the other four of us would be sitting with our laptops hooked up to a Wi-Fi hotspot in the center of the car and two inverters plugged into the power supply and chargers going to all the laptops and all the cell phones and we'd just be working the entire way riding down the road at 70 miles per hour and organizing for the next action day and the one after that and filming and editing media and getting posts out there and writing articles and publishing them and it was just full on the entire way. Look at me. I got makeup everywhere. I feel crazy. I'm tired. <laughs> I just want to sit in the sun by myself. <laughs> 
With this face of doesn't care. Is <laughs> <laughs> that wisdom? Ready, ready to drop knowledge. Yes. Well, um, this is a passive solar home built in 1975 from salvage material. There's no mortgage, no heating bill, no water bill, no electric bill, and uh, we've been living here for almost 40 years now, uh, surrounded by an acre of edible landscaping and 5,000 square foot of greenhouses. You know, we're in a 20-year-old food forest right here, probably the, one of the oldest food forests in the United States. And each terrace is a kind of a different, you know, we go all the way down to the fence line and put grapes and raspberries and blackberries on the fence line. This and, one right here. Yeah, all the way yeah. down you can see them, but all the way around there's, 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 there, we just pack it in. And uh, we put in a lot of new trees every year, yeah. you know, just new varieties that we haven't, um, haven't experimented with. Hi, I'm Stephanie, and we're at the Basalt Food Garden here in Basalt, Colorado for the Polish Ambassadors Permaculture Action Tour. So about two years ago, I started a program at the Basalt Library, which was a seed library. Um, that went really well. The community was really um, into that project, but we knew pretty quickly that we were going to need to find a sustainable source of seed and seed that is more local. Um, plants that are more regionally adapted to our area because here in Basalt, Colorado, at uh, I think we're 6,300 feet, it's high and dry, it's cold, short growing season, not a lot of water, a lot of alkaline soils. This area will be a place, one where people can just come on their way home from work or school and enjoy a connection with nature, enjoy a place to have uh, a coffee with their friends or just sit down and enjoy the sunshine. Um, but as the plants come online and start producing food, then they can also have an apple on the way home from school. Um, this is a public park still in every way. A public park is public, but now you can just eat from it and learn from it and connect in a deeper way um, that a grass kind of lot doesn't really provide. <laughs> With no deterrence, patience is key, even though it feels urgent. Do you have the strength to sit with each moment? Identify your place in the scheme and then own it. Zoom out and see the overall picture. Take the thoughts with you. Use pen to draft scripture. In so we went as far south west as San Diego, California, as far north as Seattle, Washington, and then all the way across to the east to Boston, Massachusetts, and all the way south to Jacksonville, Florida. So we covered like all four corners of the country. fans in the world right here. They deliver handmade sparkle jumpsuits made in the same exact in the same exact style as your jumpsuit. Look at this thing. Look at that ass. Oh. Look at that ass. What about when I do this? This tour is extremely special for me. I've dreamed for a few years now about how to how to merge my beliefs with my music and my beliefs are pretty simple. It's, it's to live in alignment with the earth, you know? To listen to the way the earth moves, to listen to all the things that the earth is trying to tell us. And that just means, it's really simple stuff. It's just getting your hands dirty. It's like planting your own food. You know, it's, it's all that stuff. It's creating independence. It's creating, creating self-sufficiency, independence from the big businesses and the government and creating community within that structure. Because that's, that's what my best times are in life, is when I'm around 
with just like 10 of my best friends and we're just eating good food and we're hanging out on the farm and it's just like, oh, it's beautiful, a beautiful existence. So thank you guys for supporting that. On that note. Because we get to do the hard work so the kids can like enjoy it and then they grow up and they'll do the hard work for their kids and so. Yeah, so thank you guys. Yeah. And we're all yearning for a sense of connection. I think that's why people come to these shows and these concerts and these festivals. They come because they can experience, whether for a night or whether for three days, a sense of connection unlike the sense of connection they experience back home. And so we want to grab onto that sense of community and sense of connection and say, you know, we can live this all of the time. And in order to do that, all we need to do is get out in the world around us and build the spaces and create the relationships that will facilitate us living the sense of community and connection all the time. I would love to prove that old saying wrong, that history is bound to repeat itself. And right now, the history of human civilization, as Bill Mollison puts it, is forest, field, plow, desert. Unfortunately, that's the sad truth of how humans have interacted with the land. Let's, 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 I think that would be like the ultimate challenge for our generation. Let's prove that saying history is bound to repeat itself wrong. Trying to find ways that we can just heal. So much pollution, what's the solution? Mother Earth crying, losing her will. Stop all this warring, people are starving. How many children have to be killed? Maybe the world is just a reflection of how I feel. Maybe the world is just a reflection of how I feel. Maybe the world is just a reflection of how I feel. Maybe the world. To learn it, we also start to learn that there's an alternative way that we can start to grow our own food once again or grow food in community, that we can start to create relationships of respect and abundance and reciprocity, that we can start to collect our own rainwater and make sure that our watersheds are healthy and create our own energy in ways that don't harm the earth or harm other people. We want to hear y'all say peace loud and clear on the country. Let me see the peace signs in the air up in here. We ended this off real <laughs> This is the time. <laughs> Put down your shovels <laughs> and get in line. <laughs> I was living in LA and I was going to school and spending the majority of my time working to pay for my rent. Um, doing a lot of social activities and it was incredibly overwhelming and I got burnt out doing that. Um, I was doing the, the life that you're supposed to do and um, I needed a change. They invited me to come volunteer and within a month I packed up all my stuff in LA and moved down here. It was one of the very first like majorly intuitive, heart-based decisions I've ever made, and it was incredible, like how it has changed my life since then. So where we're at is the Emerald Village, which is my home, and what we do here is, it's mostly, it's where we live, uh, so there's 10 of us that bought the property together, uh, four of the couples living here right now, another one's about to move back, and we've also got a bunch of kids on the property, about six right now, as well as a bunch of volunteers, another half a dozen of them that come and live here and help us build cool things like aquaponic systems and tree houses and food forests.
getting my hands dirty like on the land, um, you know, in the gardens and with the animals. And it's a lot of work. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, it's a lot of work to be here. Um, but it's work that's worth it. I mean, like at the end of the day, you feel completely satisfied, like like uh, being part of something, a bigger picture, being part of a, a grander vision and doing it with people that you love and have fun with and can be real with. and. Um, a way of living, a way of meeting our needs in the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their needs. Do something. Even if it's wrong, do something and keep doing it. We have 20 years of fixing. In 50 years, it won't matter, so do something. As I'm walking around, it's just like I'm getting teary-eyed, just looking around at what what is happening, what's transpiring through through this movement and all this excitement that's happening. You know, using using the power of, of music and art and the show and directing that energy the next day into something of impact. It's just like everybody here is kind of like there's so much gratitude. There's so much gratitude for us for what we're doing. There's so much gratitude for each other for everybody showing up and there's. A a lot of gratitude to just be able to share and have this experience together. If you don't like the way something's being done, then I think the, the, a really good answer is to figure out a better way to do it ourselves. And so if you want to be intelligent, you want to practice permaculture because what it's about is actually realizing that you are an infinitely powerful spiritual being in the world. And if you'd like to engage with your power to manifest a reality that's a better reality, permaculture is where it's at. Because permaculture is about a new vision. It's about creating a world that you would rather live in. It is about decentralizing this entire monstrous, toxic, petrochemical nightmare and turning it into something that actually celebrates life. I love how in the question of was this tour successful, not once are we mentioning the sold out shows or how many tickets happened or, <laughs> or yeah. you know, how, the, how our new music went and was received. It's like all that, that stuff went well, like that was fine. But the real success is like what impact did it have and like how much sparking happened and what are we going to see in 10 years? And that's, I like that. Yeah. That's a good measure of success. Yeah. What's happening here is kind of revolutionary, integrating music with learning, with action, and really all this is, is us choosing to build a world that we want to live in. What we're doing out there tomorrow is we're learning how to grow our own food and feed each other. We're learning how to build our own homes so that we don't need this system that's not working. It's like mycelium underground. We're just going to do it ourselves. So thank you for doing this with us. Ago, this only started as an idea, an idea that turned into a discussion with a group of people and was eventually put on paper. And over the course of months, we organized and worked to make the connections and find the resources to make this actually happen. And then to be sitting here now a year later and have watched it go the entire way through and to have done action days in every single city we went to and made all these connections that we're now seeing again and people are coming up and saying, you know, that changed a lot of things in my life and I'm doing things differently now. And I'm now working with this group on this new project. Check out this thing that we did two weeks ago. To know that it all started with just an idea and we brought it through all the way to action is inspiring because it's the sense of empowerment that only each of us can give to ourselves. It's only when each of us remembers that 
we have every ability to make these kind of projects and make these kind of spaces a reality, that I think we're going to find the ability to collectively change the world for the better. So just remember that you're not an observer and you're not a consumer and you don't have to just sit there and, and hope. You can get out there and you can act. Hope comes with action. It's through the power of our own hands that we're going to see this thing change. So never belittle yourself or think that you're incapable because all of us that are doing projects like this came from that space at one time. And it's only through jumping out there and making a bunch of mistakes and maybe embarrassing ourselves from time to time and a lot of hours and sweat that we've come to find that we are more than capable of creating the world that we want to live in. And when we start to share that vision beyond just for ourselves and share it collectively with everybody around us, then we find that we have all the power to make this world the way we want it to be. Um, All right. Oh. And now we're going to go home. sleep. I'm going to go home and go to sleep because <laughs> I've been awake for about a month and a half. <laughs> Bye guys. Bye. Bye buddy. <laughs>